The Sun's incredibly high-profile reporting about Hugh Edwards was undermined by two distinct events. The first, on Monday, was a statement via the lawyer of the 20-year-old at the centre of the story. They said that nothing inappropriate had happened between themselves and the BBC host, and that the Sun story was rubbish. They also said they told the Sun this view, but the paper ignored it. The second fatal blow was the news on Wednesday that the police judged there was no evidence of criminal behaviour on Hugh Edwards' part. Now, the combination of those two statements meant that whoever Hugh Edwards had bought photos from didn't feel they had been exploited. And we can also conclude, or at least it's implied, the relationship between the two people had not broken the law because the police have said they have no reason um, to investigate Edwards. In response, The Sun gave this statement. We must re-emphasise that The Sun at no point in our original story alleged criminality and also took the decision neither to name Mr Edwards nor the young person involved in the allegations. Suggestions about possible criminality were first made at a later date by other media outlets, including the BBC. From the outset, we have reported a story about two very concerned and frustrated parents who made a complaint to the BBC about the behaviour of a presenter and payments from him that fueled the drug habit of a young person. Now, this backtracking from The Sun is, of course, phenomenally disingenuous. First, this was never just a story about concerned parents. If it were, surely the conflicting opinion of the young person involved would have been relevant to the reporting. Why wouldn't we want to have heard both sides? The young person, via their lawyer, told The Sun that they had a very, very different account from their parents. Second, why is this disingenuous? Well, the claim the Sun never implied criminal behaviour is just absolute nonsense. Now, this is the first story the Sun published about Hugh Edwards, then, of course, unnamed. Now, I've highlighted the second sentence here, which says, quote, the well-known presenter is accused of giving the teen more than £35,000 since they were 17 in return for sordid images. It is illegal to hold explicit photos of someone under 18, so this sentence does imply criminal behaviour. The fact the police think Edwards has no case to answer suggests that in fact there were no photos sent from him, or from them, sorry, when the person was 17. And the Sun were even more explicit. This was a headline on Sunday. Top BBC star who paid child for sex pictures could be charged by cops and face years in prison. Experts say this is a paper that said they never implied criminality. And what I think is even more misleading here is referring to the person in question as a child, right? The person is now 20. We have no evidence Hugh Edwards was ever sent explicit photos of them when they were under 18. So the son's new claims don't stack up. Yet, Rod Little on Newsnight still claimed they had done a tip-top job of their journalism. The problem is, is that the Sun has behaved impeccably throughout this. It has done exactly the right thing. It has done the sort of tabloid, acceptably tabloid journalism, which is holding the powerful to account. It has done so with a degree of of measured carefulness. It has tried not to hurt people in the in the in the in in the way that it's done it. It didn't name Hugh Edwards. Um, it, it, it came down to Hugh Edwards' family to do that, okay. as you say very bravely. Um, and there is absolutely no case to answer from the from the Sun whatsoever. Rod Little is currently a columnist at the Sun and former editor of the Today program on Radio 4. So in keeping with his demand to hold the powerful to account, we should inform you of some facts about him. In 2005, Little accepted a caution for assaulting his then-girlfriend. This is how that was reported in The Times. Little gets caution for row with girlfriend. Rod Little, former editor of Radio 4's Today programme, was arrested on election night after allegedly punching his pregnant girlfriend. Police responding to a 999 call arrested Mr Little at the South London home he shares with Alicia Monckton and questioned him for several hours at a police station. Mr Little, who is a team captain on BBC Two's Call My Bluff quiz show and associate editor of The Spectator magazine, accepted a caution for common assault and was later released. Now, Little said he only accepted the caution to save time and had not in fact hit his girlfriend. She was 20 weeks pregnant at the time. So what about his media ethics, though? Perhaps Little is a scumbag in his personal life, but a forensic and fastidious journalist. Well, not so. In 2012, during the trial of two of Stephen Lawrence's killers, Little wrote this article. It was titled, Do Gary Dobson and David Norris really have any chance of a fair trial? The judge in the case considered it would affect the impartiality of the jury so much that he ordered them not to read it. 
the CPS, or the Crown Prosecution Service, then prosecuted the spectator for contempt of court. The paper did not contest it. So contempt of court is a very, very serious crime in journalism, one of the most serious ones. And we could go into the numerous instances of Rod Little's overt and vile racism. There really are loads and they are really, really atrocious. But let's stick to controversies with some connection to the allegations against Hugh Edwards. Of course, on that front, the key charge concerns the issue of sexual encounters with younger people. And on that theme, Little wrote this in 2012. The one thing stopping me from being a teacher was that I could not remotely conceive of not trying to shag the kids. It seemed to me virtually impossible not to. And I was convinced that I'd be right in there on day one. We're talking secondary school level here, by the way. And even then, I don't think I'd have dabbled much below year 10, as it is now called. He's a preposterous person. It's preposterous that he's on the BBC in a section about media ethics, um, where they don't bring up all of those historical, well, I would say allegations, but I mean, I think lots of these are com com confirmed, right? Especially what he's written that is confirmed. It's not an allegation that he wrote that he wouldn't be a teacher because he wouldn't be able to not shag a 14 year old. That was his words in in The Spectator. It's literally mind boggling. I was just sitting here listening to that litany in, in, in shock. Like it, it, it seems, it seems unreal. There is no ambiguity then about the Sun's journalism. The BBC, though, have done some of their own original reporting on Hugh Edwards. Um, these new allegations were reported on Newsnight on Wednesday night. A BBC employee has told us that they receive what they believe are inappropriate messages, um, that they'd received these messages on social media from the presenter and they believe they were uncomfortable and left them feeling awkward. And they told us, sadly, from my experience, he's been sending suggestive messages to me. They were inappropriate. There is a power dynamic that makes them inappropriate. We have seen those messages which refer to the BBC staff members' appearance and they do appear to be flirtatious. And they were sent this year. Just to add to that, Lucy, Newsnight has spoken to two other people, one who currently works at the BBC, one a former uh, BBC employee. I spoke to one of them. Uh, this person told me they'd never met the newsreader. Um, and this person said they received late night messages on social media, including kisses from Hugh Edwards, which they said they believed was an abuse of power. And our colleague Luke Jones spoke to someone who still works here, who told us how the presenter had sent a private message on social media commenting on their physical appearance, which gave them a cold shudder. I think there's questions for BBC bosses about the culture in the newsroom and the way that complaints can be raised and the way people feel comfortable or not to raise them. Certainly two out of the three people said that they felt they couldn't report what they think is inappropriate behaviour to BBC managers. One said that, you know, while the BBC bosses have said in the last few days there are procedures put in place for whistleblowing, it's not really clear what to do. And the person I spoke to said, that, that, that they thought that BBC managers should be looking into the relationship dynamics between when you have very senior members of staff and junior members of staff, some on huge salaries and great deference is shown to the presenters. Uh, you know, this is someone who is very loyal to the BBC and they believe it's not just a BBC problem, but a problem across the whole industry. Um, the BBC responded tonight saying it's encouraging staff to come forward if they have any concerns. And the Director General did make this point in an email to all staff and that they're communicating with staff and they would continue to do so. Those allegations on Newsnight do seem like more of a potential abuse of power than the Sun stories, which, I mean, for everything that we currently know, are just a case of consensual adults trading pictures. And at the same time, the BBC have been criticised for continuing the row for releasing new revelations while Hugh Edwards is in hospital with severe depression. You shouldn't have very senior employees sending suggestive messages to younger, more junior staffers, you know, especially if they haven't invited it, right? I, I think that is an abuse of power. At the same time, I think why people are questioning whether this is the time to do that is because obviously the reason we're talking about Hugh Edwards is what now actually seems like incredibly irresponsible journalism in the sun. If someone's in the news because of a, a, a set of irresponsible stories, do you then pile in with a story that happens to be responsible taken on its own sort of terms, but when sort of thrown into this bigger maelstrom um, seems somewhat different. Very complicated. I mean, I think people are going to talk for a very long time about how the BBC handled this whole row.